Hi guys, welcome to the next installment in our SIRS tutorials. Um, today we'll be looking at rationalizing the denominator. Now hopefully you'll remember that, that word rational, a rational number and an irrational number. So a rational number is where we have a on both top and bottom part of the fraction, so the numerator and the, and the denominator, we have rational numbers, so they are both integers. Okay. So a whole number. So what it means to rationalize the denominator it means that we want to make the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, a whole number. So we might have a question like this, um, 1 over root 3. So at the moment, obviously, this is an irrational number because the bottom part of the fraction, the denominator, is a third or an irrational number. So we want to rationalize that bottom part. It doesn't matter about the top part because we just want to rationalize the denominator. So what we're going to do, we need to times. Remember, if we are changing a fraction, remember we don't want to change the value of it, we just want to change what it looks like. So hopefully remember what we do at the top, we must do the bottom or vice versa. So what we need to figure out is, first of all, what can we multiply root 3 by in order to, I guess, make a rational number? Well, hopefully you remember, if I square a, a square root number or a root number, the square and the root sign cancel out and you're left with just that number. So that, in other words, we want to do root 3 times root 3. So in order to rationalize a denominator, we simply times it by itself, well, by the, by the uh, radical number. So we've got root 3 times root 3 and we said that before what we do the bottom, we must do the top in order for us not to change the value of that fraction. Okay, so let's go back to remember when we multiply fractions, we times the tops, we times the bottoms. So 1 times root 3 is just root 3, and root 3 times root 3 becomes 3. Because remember, that's the whole idea why we times it by root 3, is to create that rational number on the bottom. So now we've rationalized the denominator, and that is simply our answer. Remember, we're allowed to have a, 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 an irrational number on top, a cert on top. It's just the bottom, the denominator that we are rationalizing. So let's have a look at another one. We'll do um, 4 over root 5. So again, in order to rationalize the denominator, we simply times it by root 5 over root 5. We do that because root 5 times root 5 makes 5, so we've rationalized the denominator. And then 4 times root 5 is simply just 4 root 5. It's actually quite simple. Okay, There's nothing really um, too difficult about this. It's just remembering what rationalizing the denominator make, uh, means. So let's try a bit more challenging one. 2 root uh, 5 over root 7. Okay, So we're going to rationalize it by timesing it by root 7 over root 7. Remember, we've got a times top and bottom by the same number. Okay, so let's do well, root 7 times root 7 is just 7. That's the whole reason why we did that. Now, 2 root 5 times root 7 may, makes 2 root 35, because 5 times 7 is 35. Now, can I simplify that third any further? Well, the only numbers going to 35 are, are 5 and 37. So 5 and 7, we can't make a, a square number out of that. So that is simply our answer. And it's fine because we have made the de denominator a rational number. Okay, let's try this time. Let's go a little bit more challenging now. Let's go 3 over 2 root um, 3. Now this is a bit more challenging because we don't just have just the, the third by itself. We now have a number in front of it. But we do it the same way. We want to times it by root 3 over root 3. So 3 times root 3 is just 3 root 3. Now we've got, we know root 3 times root 3 is just 3, but we also have that 2 at the front, because it's 2 times, basically doing this, 2 times root 3 times root 3, and root 3 times root 3 is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6, so we get 3 root 3, all over 6. And to be honest, you're not going to get 
too many more challenging ones apart from that. Possibly one where you have to then simplify that cert on top. So let's have a look at one more question. Um, let's do something like this. Um, so we'll start with, um, let's say, we'll do 3 root 10 over 4 root 2. Okay, so obviously we have a cert on the bottom, so we want to rationalize the denominator. And I'll say, guys, if ever you get an answer with a cert on the bottom, we call it unsimplified. So if you were just told to simplify this without even being told to rationalize the denominator, you should actually rationalize it. If it just says simplify, okay, like this, you should in fact know that you have to simplify it. Okay, or you have to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to times it by root 2 over root 2 as such. So that becomes 3 root 20, because 10 times 2 is 20, over, and we know it's going to be 4 times root 2 times root 2 um, makes it 2. Okay, so we get 3 root 20 over 8. Now that's not fully simplified because you might recognize that we have that root 20 that can actually be simplified smaller. So that can be simplified as root 4 times root 5 all over 8. And that makes it 2 root 5. So 3 times 2 is 6 root 5 over 8. Now to start with guys, you won't get anything more challenging at the moment. Um, there will get slightly more challenging questions in the future where you might have something like this, um, root 2 minus 1, or 1 minus root 2. That does get a little bit more challenging, but we don't have to do that just yet. Okay, so have a go at some of these questions. Try out your textbook. Any problems, let me know. But that is rationalizing the denominator or simply simplifying a question when you have a third as a denominator, you need to rationalize it anyway. Enjoy.